Is it okay that I'm recording the meeting? Yes. Perfect. Of course I have it. All right. Um, present now. Entire screen. Actually. So this is a thing I did as a demo for my wife. So I took a picture of a chihuahua and brought it in and then traced the outside of the chihuahua. And then I threw in some more splines to, for dots where her thing is. This was based on an image and then pulled out to three dimensions, which was a lot more complicated. This took a lot of work and it turned out original RoboCat image was not complicated, was not simple. But the wrench was a trace, the calipers are a trace, the circuit diagram are traces. And basically what we're doing is we're taking an image and then we are manually um, building a sketch around it. So the first trick to this is finding an image that um, works well. So if I just find pictures of anything, it's not going to be very easy to trace. What I really want is like a silhouette or a simple color drawing. Silhouette's the best search term. And now, no, cancel, uh, cancel. So if I go back and... So I might be able to trace one of these, but it would be a lot of work and it'd be very fuzzy when we get into it. But if we do a silhouette, it tends to give us very nice hard lines. And you can make your life easier by picking stuff that has lots of smooth surfaces. So this cat would be perfectly easy. This cat wouldn't be bad at all. But if I go. Hey, Sandra. Hi guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to learn not to drive through Connecticut one of these years. That's all right. Uh, I just started the thing. So I was talking about what we're doing today is making uh, silhouettes. Okay. Tracing, tracing objects. So I could do this, but it would be awful. It would take me a long time. It would be a lot of work to find all the points. Same mm -hmm. with the image where everything's really, where it's fairly small and lost details. Even this with its ver with all those pointy bits, those are going to be really hard for you. But if I take and find a smoother image, even that's kind of hard. So I'm going to go back to just cat. Um, I find a nice clean image, a nice clean line, it'll be really easy for me to trace. So let's do. I kind of like the cartoony cat. That looks really nice. <laughs> and then just like, you can take there. So I'm going to take and I'm going to right click and copy this image. And it's fuzzy, but that's okay because I'm just going to pick, I'm going to use this to guide my line, not exactly do it. So I'm going to copy the image and I'll be uh, taking and putting a link into um, for a tool called paint.net. It's a free, uh, fairly powerful image editor. It's sort of like Photoshop Lite. Okay. If you have Photoshop, you can always use that, but. Really, you just need the ability to use a magic, uh, magic wand tool so I can isolate this. Because if I bring this in and try to size it inside my uh, Fusion 360, Fusion is not going to know where the effect let me file. Save as. So if I go in Fusion, I start a new project. And I start a sketch. So I've I can insert an image. I follow along around just trying to show you the idea on my computer. When I bring this in, the only way I can measure this is I can use the ruler that's available for me. I can't easily set the exact dimension in Fusion. And it's gonna be really hard to guess the size because you know. I don't fall exactly on one of the lines. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I have this border between the two. So I really want to just isolate just the cat and get rid of this border. So I'm going to escape. I'm going to go that net. I'm going to use the magic wand tool. I'm going to select. I'm going to use the magic wand tool. And select the background. I'm then going to invert my selection. So now I'm just selecting the cat. <coughs> And the reason I picked background first is because it's not perfectly smooth. Like there's a little like black dots. And I don't want 
So I have to fight with those with a magic wand tool. Might not pick those up nicely. See, there's a little white spots. If I use the magic wand, select the background, and then edit, invert the selection. Now I'm selecting just the cat, but it has a nice clean selection. And I'm going to crop it to selection. So now I have just the cat. Nothing more, nothing less. Now I can bring this into my design. And it seems like it basically tries to make your cat roughly, um, I don't know how it scales it. And they don't give you actual size in the Fusion 360, which I don't like at all, but unfortunately that's the tool we're using. So, so this looks like it's roughly a half inch tall. So it's about a quarter inch above the line and there. So I'm going to scale this because I really want to be about twice that size. See? Um, actually, I can, so I'm going to scale it to be, So now we're about an inch and a half, less than an inch and a half, between an inch and an inch and a half of um, sizing. That's a good size. It's going to be a key ring size, roughly. So now I have an image inside of here. So right now, before I do anything else, I'm going to... That was an easy way to do I'm going to save this at trace. I'm going to hit click there. And what I'm doing right now is opening. I'm going to go and where is the share? Share a public link. And in the chat, I am placing a link to this thing in the Fusion 360 model that we have. And it's just the cat right now. There's nothing in there. I can't actually 3D print this. I have to actually create a model around here. So let me know if that works properly because I haven't tried this before. Oh, Sandra, it's okay. I'm recording the video. Yeah, I, actually, I noticed Drive let me know that it was recording as I as I signed in. I just always get vertical. That's fine. Because it's, what we need as teachers. The verbal confirmation on video, which if you have a large class, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> they nod their head. No, no. You have to I'm say it. I, I brought the other monitor with me, but it, it doesn't approve of being in Connecticut either. So I, I'm going to be on one monitor for this. Okay. Well, what's nice is you can always take this and follow along from the video because, again, I'll post the link in here also. So the trick to this tool is picking up shapes. Now, I like this because I can probably do this, this shape here with a built-in shape. I'm gonna use the art to do this guy. So in my sketch, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to start by doing the eyes. So I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to go to my arc, three-point arc tool. And I'm going to grab one corner of the eye. Back. Arc. Three-point arc. I'm going to click. Why isn't it? Okay. Our fusions decided it wants to do weird things to me. <laughs> the heck? Arc. 
I don't have the cat in my Fusion 360 yet. Did you, were you able to grab that file, open the file? So I click on it. It was really slow, but now it's finally open. It's open on a browser on my computer. Is there an option to download it? Yeah, I tried to download it, but it's... Okay. It's for my email. Oh, uh, I guess maybe it just takes a little while. It just hasn't emailed it to me yet. Okay. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm in the wrong email. That's why. Okay. So I got it. Okay. I have too many emails. So, I know that feeling. Which means it's actually going to. So I've drawn one arc. If it's making bad guesses, if you hold down the alt key, it turns off the inference. So I'm going to do another arc. And this time I'm going to click on the. Start endpoint. And I now have the eye set for me. So. Now, this is the one time we don't have to dimension and lock things in place. It's all artistic, so it just has to look generally where we want it. So does it open up, Jared, now? Yep, I got it on my computer. Um, and it will it have the right sizing already? Or do I have to do what? that? Oops. It should have the image all there or the image in there already sized because I saved it, I give it I sent it off after I sized the image. Perfect. And what did you do? I did a three-point arc, because that way I click on one end, click on the other end, and then drag the middle to where I want it. And then same thing for the bottom part of the eye. How are you doing, Sandra? Um, I'm just placing my arc and wishing that I had remembered to put my mouse in my bag. Oh my. Yeah, doing doing this with a trackpad is awful. You might end up going to watch and then try this later when you have a mouse available because... I have a trackpad too. <laughs> what? I have a trackpad too. Oh. Yeah, actually, I, I have my arc in, in place. And I, I'm really oh. eager to learn how to do this, Chris. We have a bunch of corporate sponsors at Making Matters, and we want to do cool things with their logos. I've I have done that. We had a speaker uh, day from Oracle, and while they was doing the presentation in the class, I made him a three uh, three D printed key ring because like I'm bored. I'll just free, I'll I'll just make a key ring. So I made the Oracle key ring for him. He's like, whoa! Like how did you? I'm like I was bored, and I was, you were talking, so I was like, I'll just make a thing. <laughs> Yeah, Sandra, we can do that. That'd be cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Obviously, if you want help with that, I'm more than happy to help with those things. So I should be more active in the makerspace now that we are. Uh, those are dangerous words. I, um, I can't help doing Electric Zola, who put us over the edge with our tax credits. But what do we have, like seven sheets of paper on our wall, Jared? Yeah, we're recording. So we have proof that Chris said that. Okay. Hey, I <laughs> Doing this type of thing, if making mods, I can do in my sleep because you know I I do this regularly. This is my make Christmas gift tool. <laughs> so I'm now going from top to bottom, and I'm dragging out. And again, I'm just trying to make it look kind of like the thing. If it's not perfect, no one's going to see the underlying image when I'm done. I'm just using it to guide my work. So I did two three point arcs and made the cat eye also. And I'm going to skip out the tool, so I'm done with that. And we have several closed areas. This might have some problem printing. Um, as a single color print, I might have to add some material to the top of the eye so it doesn't fall out. <laughs> or if it's a two color print, you said you have a two color printer available, then I would do black and white and have it. 
Actually, I'll do black and glow and dark green so that when you turn the lights off, just the eyes would show up and it'd be really cool. Like Cheshire Cat. All right, so now I have my eye done here. I'm lazy. I don't want to do this twice. So I'm going to take and highlight this entire thing. I'm going to control C, copy, and control Z, paste. And now, moving the whole thing, <laughs> this dot here, navigation point, I'm just going to sort of place it where it looks good. Now I have two eyes for free. And here's where the point where it gets to be hard with a trackpad is I'm going to do to do the outline. There's no shape that will do the outline nicely. Maybe I could build it out some lines and ovals, but especially when I get down to like the tail, there's no shape that's going to do this tail. So I'm going to use what's called the spline tool is the spline tool. And this is where um, watch. I don't think I think you have a lot of trouble and a lot of frustration. You try to do the trackpad. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start my spline at a hard corner, and I'm going to be holding the alt key while I work. I believe the alt key is the key to turn off inference. Inference is where it guesses yeah. that you want to. Oh, lined up. Ooh. That's some wind here. Something fell over. Yeah. Yeah, we have some wind here, too. We don't tend to lose power, but. All right. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to click. I'm sorry, here. And I'm just going to work my way around the shape. So, can you? Mine actually didn't copy. How did you? What then? Oh, we, so I think so. To copy, I I highlight the whole thing. Okay. And then I control C, control V, just like I would do in like a Word document. And then when I paste it. Back it up. Control V. This weird glyph thing shows up. This is a orbit yeah. control tool. Yeah. And the part I want to grab is this dot. That's sort of the center of it. And then I can drag it where I want to go. If I want to make sure this was um, going to stay there, if I grab on this line, I can only move left and right. If I want to do, I want these like exactly horizontal. I can do it that way. When I'm doing this, I don't assume things are actually horizontal because really they're slightly off center. But cool. Cool. And I have to enter when I'm done. And just if this doesn't line up perfectly, it doesn't matter because they're not going to see this image when I'm done. They're just going to see my trace. So I'm going to spline and I'm going to go to the I, want, I think I want control points blind. So, again, just watch this. Don't try to do it because it's going to be very, very frustrating on trackpad. So, basically, all I'm doing is I'm clicking along the edge. If I want a tighter shape, I'm going to tight click closer together. If it's a smooth shape, I can come out farther between my clicks. So, go around this ear. I'm going to zoom in and click. Now coming off the ear, I can now go fast work because I don't really smart or less straight around the ear. I'm going to click more times here. And I kind of want to get myself all the way over to the other whiskers. So I'm just going to gently go over the top of the head. I'm going to come in close around the ear. I can go farther again when I'm in a more general narrow section, a uh, more straight section. And then when I get back into the corner of that western, I'm going to hit the check mark. And now I have a clean line around the head, the head. If I wanted to move something like this ear, maybe I want to curve this in, I can grab this control, I can hit escape and grab this control point. And I can move on. I can move these control points to make things. I can pull things out or adjust as I need to. Now for the whiskers, I can just use the line tool. Like these are just straight lines, so I'm doing. 
Or maybe I want to skip the Worcesters because if it's going to be a solid, if I'm not going to put a background on this, these are going to be very liable to break off. So I can even decide I want to skip the Worcesters. Could you just say one more time what sketch tool you used to go around was? Yep. I'm going to be using the um, spline and I'm going to use the control point spline. The uh, fake point spline does start will fight you with. Because it will try to make things go through or uh, perpendicular through the whole the points, and it gets messy. Control vertex spline gives you control point spline gives me these secondary points that are sort of guiding. So this dotted line is your control, and this spline is sort of the best fit around those. So I can drag this in and out, and it makes the line move with it. It's sort of a smooth line, and close together. Um, long for long straight areas, big. Spots for them. Anytime I have a tight curve, I want more control points. Because that way I have more, it's going to bend the line faster. So I think I'm going to skip the, uh, we'll draw the whiskers in. Why not? So I'm going to go to my line tool. And I'm going to start, I'll make sure I start on the end point of this line. Uh, And these whiskers are just lines. I'm gonna do the other whisker, the other first whisker here. Straight out, down, back again. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go back to my spline tool. Again, I want the control point spline. I'm going to start at that white pot spot. Yeah, maybe I'm going to move in a little bit. i move this point here. And because it's artistic, nothing fixed, I can just sort of guide the points till they look good from a distance. But again, this whole thing's going to be like two inches big. I don't need to make it perfect. You're not going to notice that the head's not perfectly smooth there. So back to my line tool. And I don't like how this cuts in here, so I'm going to sort of my spline. So mine's gonna be more gentle. I'm gonna go my line tool again, and we have lightning here, FYI. So um, yeah, it's just start downpouring here. We don't. I don't tend to lose power because I'm near the I'm near Conquer Hospital, but if I do, um, we can figure another time. But I'll finish. So I'll be available. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm using my uh, control, my control project spline. This time I'm going to sort of just go. So Chris, there's no easy way to do what you're doing. You just need patience and, and a mouse, right? Because I've tried yeah. to do this in Inkscape and it's aggravating, but maybe I just need to, I don't know, drink um, a glass of wine Inkscape, or something. I, I find Inkscape is more frustrating with this because you don't have as many tools available to you and it can be very, a lot. This, uh, the trick here is just a little patience and. Okay. Okay. Oh, wrong point. You'll see when I get to the big section. You can kind of just get into a movement and it's not too bad. So I'm going to come in around the head and start doing that section. Oh, wrong point. So at this point, I'm just going to start really moving F, and you'll see. Oh, 
Also, Inkscape has a tool called the Trace tool. I use the Trace a lot. So notice across the back, I can just do a few control points. I'm going to finish this plane here because I want a hard corner of the tail. I'm going to zoom out. It'll click. And again, if this isn't perfect, you're not going to notice it once it's done, as long as it looks self-consistent and good. Because no one's going to see the original artwork. So while there might be some copyright items, I really consider it's like using it as inspired by. It's sort of like painting from, well, referencing another program. And as long as you're not stalling it, it's that you're just making gifts, you're okay, right? Yeah, I, technically copyright doesn't really care that much if you're stalling or not. They just care that you're doing it. So, it's a little questionable. I always figure, you know, it's, if I wasn't, if you're selling, you get to a little more. It, it morally you might have more of an issue, but really, it's just a matter of being careful about your things. And, but um, I've had really talented kids draw their own stuff, and then we trace it, and then that's that's the course. I'm gonna make some Cole's Kitchen keychains. I could that? trace our logo. Yeah. And again, if you want me to do this type of work for you, I'm very happy doing it. You know, I can do this while I watch TV. And the worst one I ever did, I did the Coca-Cola logo for my aunt, and it was that was that was awful. Really? Well, just I mean, it was just long. It was just there's just so many points and you really couldn't skimp because um the th you don't have much thickness to worry about, like where it work with. And if it doesn't look right, it's really obvious it doesn't look right because uh, branding has been very good to uh, Coca Cola, and you know right away if it doesn't look right. So now. Any luck, we should have a closed feature. Now, it's quite possible somewhere along the way I did not make a good connection. So our next check is to see if we actually have made a model. So I'm going to finish the sketch, just like we always do. And I'm going to extrude. And it will not let me select the cat. And the reason is, is somewhere, this is... So I'm going to jump back into the sketch, and I'm going to split the cat in half to see where my problem is. I need to jump. Well, that part's a pain. It's actually not that bad. I'm just need to. Why is it not? Come on. So I'm going to jump back into my sketch. I'm going to draw take a line. I'm going to make sure I connect to the solid line. And I'm going to cat, cut the cat's head off. And notice what happened when I did that. So your problem's in the upper half then. Since that it is. Half is half to extrude without the head. Yep, exactly. So now we do what I call divide and conquer. I'm just going to break things off. The reason I split at the head, the head had a lot of complex connections. It's really easy to make a mistake. Okay, it's somewhere over here. It's the whisker one. It probably is. Okay, so which whisker is it? That's the question. I think it's the third whisker, but. Oh, it looks like right there. 
Yeah, like right, right here. Yep, yeah, so let's see. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. 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 So there's two possible failure modes. There is a gap or discontinuity where they're like that. Where like the two points are past each other. You can also in a spline end up with a loop over itself. If it has a loop over itself, that will also cause a failure. So to fix that, I'm gonna use coincident and I'm saying this point here is on that point there. And then I'm going to adjust this line because oh. I'm going to take and tilt this. I use the wrong spline here, and that's why it's here. So I'm going to actually delete this section of spline because I used the wrong spline tool, and that's why it's all weird. Oops, the other spline tool is weird, and I don't like it. Control point. There we go. So now I can take and finish my sketch and extrude it. And it doesn't matter that I've cut the cat up because everything is together. So and I'm going to extrude it. I don't point one. And now I can take and I should be able to delete the picture. And that would be my cat. And maybe I'd, I'd want to play with the whisker area. I don't really like how that looks, but this is a really good starting point. Now, if I wanted to print this into pieces, I do need to do one more thing. I need to put something back here, make some material behind these. So to do that, I'm going to flip my cat over. I'm going to start a sketch on the back of my cat. And I'm going to use the tool to the project and I'm going to project this and I'm going to project this and I'm going to project that. Now I can take and finish my sketch and I'm going to extrude this sec that and I'm going to join and I'm going to go 0.05. Oh, went the wrong way. Negative 0.05. Negative 0.05. So now this will be printable. If I want to do different colors, I would have to split these into two different um, models and make them two separate pieces. Uh, I can cover that in an advanced uh, class if we want to do an advanced class with multi-part assemblies and whatnot. But this is now completely printable. I can export it, which, as we found, takes forever from Fusion because, of course, it does. You said you would have to print it in two parts? Um, I would have to make it as two. So the way multicolor printing works is that you have two intersecting models that, are, that share the same coordinate system mm -hmm. and you set one model we print so that this cat would be one model and these iris pieces or these eye whites would be a separate piece but they'd be two separate chunks in fact i could probably do let me see if i can change that last extrude to um, instead of union um new body so now i have two separate bodies their different pieces okay so if i export this stl and eventually a day and a half from later now we'll export the file and then build us our piece I'm Come curious on. what kind of time that adds to your print if it's doing two colors. So it depends upon your printer style. Um, if you, it's, it's going to, because, so if you have a dual nozzle printer, mm -hmm. uh, 
um, you still have to per you still have to build some sort of usually have some sort of fence or something so that you have some place for the drill to go. On my multicolor and um, the Prusa I have, it has to unload and reload filaments. So I have running on the printer right now is like a one up Mario mushroom, and it's a printing three of them. They're tiny key rings. It's two and a half hours because it has to change the filament three times per layer. Okay. Um, let me see if I have, I might have some models to show. So I'm going to use Prusa Slicer. I can show you some output for I'm thinking. That thing looks cool. Yeah, there's their sample prints. I really, I'm very happy with uh, the Prusa printers. Um, so I'm going to add downloads. So, if I have this printed all with one color, my print time is going to be somewhere in the order, because it's a big model, about three, four hours. faster. Oh, nine hours. Even though the multicolor here is on for plane, so it's not going to be that uh, heavy of a change. And you know, print what's called a purge block. Basically, every time it changes filaments, it needs to oh. When it switches filaments, it has to purge out the old color and then add the new color. So this color change is only one layer, so it's going to be more efficient than it would be otherwise. So it's probably going to only be an extra 20 or 30 minutes. So we were nine and a half, and now it's 9.58. So I added a half hour, just making a dual club print. Because that's the. Let me hit Control A. Um, I'm gonna take this. So never you never print it in this orientation, but I want to show you where it gets worse. This is where it's do multiple color changes. So this is printing this way. I want to see what the print time is. Again, you'd never print in this orientation because it overhangs. Mm -hmm. You'd have to put everywhere. It'd be awful, but. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. Okay, so 10 hours and 9 minutes. Now if I switch this to a second color, now we're going to have multiple tool changes. Every layer where the eyes are, it's going to have to go back and forth between filament 1 and filament 2. Filament 1, filament 2. And it's probably going to be 12 hours, 13 hours, doing a two-color print this way. Oh, my print quality is up. That's why it's taking. That's why the print time was more than I thought it was going to be. But now we're at fifteen hours. So I had five hours because every place where it's doing these eyes, it's going to have to go do this color, then do this color, do this, then go up a layer, and every layer it's going to have to do that. Whereas where the color was on two separate planes, it was less work. So uh, multicolor printing is really neat, but it definitely increases your processing time. Okay. You can also do cool things with like um, removable fill, uh, fill uh, what removable um, supports. Hold on one second. I'm going to grab a piece for you to show you something.
So this is the model I split the eyes and made a separate color. Oh, that's wicked. You know, it's the, uh, if you remember the Fast from the Volkswagen ads back in, like, the early 2000s, maybe? Late 90s. Anyway, uh, this I printed with dissolvable supports because that tail is super thin. There's no way I was going to be able to take supports off of that. So this was printed with dissolvable supports so that after I was finished, I basically put it in warm water and the supports basically fell off of it after about a while. It was not super fast, but the process is really cool. But the print time for printing four of these was like 18 hours, 20 hours. Um, the nice thing about when you're doing multicolor printing, you actually get a, you save time printing more than one thing. Um, for our Pride Club, I 3D printed some rainbows for pins. And printing of one of them took an hour and a half. Even though they're tiny, because I had to change every layer, I had to change five times. Or four tool, four tool changes per layer, because five filaments. Um, printing 32 of them was five hours. Because I, I, pretty much, because I each print because it could do every because it ha, could do all the red for all thirty two of them for the first layer, all the uh, yellow, all the blue, all the green, all the purple in the wrong order because I'm stupid, and then go back and do the next layer and the next layer same thing every time. But doing one, it has the same number of tool changes doing one as it did doing for all of them. Okay. So it's an economy of scale kind of thing. Exactly. Also, your purge block doesn't get any bigger because the purge block is just your transition between the two. Mm -hmm. So you actually waste less, fil less filament per object. Let's see if this is finished. Good. All right. I'm going to go and control A, delete. Go put our cat trace on here. So there's our cat ready to print. If I take our purpose, we'll split into um, parts. Excellent. Pick up the eyes as separate objects. So I could set the um, this to black, but not quite black. Set the uh, set my second filament extruder to like a white, but not quite, but um, white. And then now I can select each part. So I'm going to tell. So that's the pupil. That should be filament one. That's the other pupil. That should be filament one. This should be filament two. And then this should be filament two. Of course, your slicer is going to be different than mine because you don't have the Prusa, but now this will be a multicolor print with two colors. Nice. That does look cool. Yeah. And there's some options for Prusa Slicer. I could do things like change on, turn on the um, until turn on ironing. So it would make it nice and smooth on top. Or I could go turn off ironing, do like um, concentric. So now it would sort of give it, it would follow the outside line as much as possible, which gives it a kind of artistic, neat look. That's um, cool. These are options for Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer might be compatible with your printers. I don't know your print shop well. I'm hoping that, again, I'll be able to visit more this summer now that I, it's not the end of the world and I'm you know, not in school. Unfortunately, it's just during the school year, there's no way I'm going to get to the makerspace, unfortunately. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm so... I'm a basic. The problem is that my job is, my job is the makerspace at school, so effectively. So... <laughs> Coming to uh, the makerspace after is not exactly the most relaxing thing because it's basically more of the same. But there's a summer I'd love to help out and do whatever you guys need help with. Nice. So that is the tracing. Again, this is perfect for corporate logos, things like that. I can help you with those. Uh, if you, we can do up to two colors, I believe, because you said you had a two color printer. Uh huh. We might be able to do multiple colors also by staging them by height by doing pause printing. 
And I talked about that in the other video where you can basically change color by height. Um, so if you want to, if we might build something there. So, um, so anyway, you set the um, size for this way back at the beginning when you brought yeah. it, you did the scale times two. Yep. Yep. What if you were like, actually, I want this to be a little bigger right now. Oh, I could, I could easily go and just change, just change it. Object. Um, I can set actual sizes. So, so you can also do it after. It's it. So I could do, I could, that's lock scaling right now. So I could be like, man, I want this to be a solid 1.75 inches wide. But then I really don't want any thicker. So I'll unlock the scaling and I'll make it 0.1 tall. And then I'll reslice. And now I have a slightly bigger cat. Or maybe I want this to be like a giant pin. So 2.5. Oh, it'll be lock the things 2.5 again i don't want it thicker i want it nice and thin so 0.1 so now i have a much bigger cat and you can see the print time is 37 minutes so not bad because the eyes are only so much if i duplicate this and make two cats the print time is going to be only is an hour and two minutes. So I saved 10 minutes off of printing them separately. So we um we rented a stall at Market Days in Concord. I, I think like this would really draw kids to come and watch the 3D printer just match the cats. I would love to, during Market Days, let me know. I would love to come and help out with the booth. If you want things there, I could probably bring, I'm, I should be borrowing my multi color, the five color printer. So I need some space. Yeah, to we don't have one I, of those. <laughs> I but I could bring it with me and show off like more complicated bits. Yeah, that would be great. We're definitely trying to fill in our market booth, face booth, and make it interesting. And yeah, we don't want we don't want to ask the same people to be there every day for three days. And also, I think we want to mix yes. it up with the stuff we show people. So let me know. Yeah, so suing six cats is only two hours and 45 minutes. Very so cool. My cat per minute, my cat per unit time goes down as I print more of them. Because if the we can lock the children in, then their parents have to stand there and talk to us. Yep. <laughs> Said kids do like watching the 3D printer do its thing. I mean, at this point, I'm kind of done with it because I watch it all the time, but... <laughs> <laughs> Usually if I'm staring at it, it's because it's misbehaving and I need to like figure out why it's misbehaving. Um, yeah, so if there's other stuff you guys want to learn or you want me to do other sessions, no. And I'm going to stop recording now.